everyone, this is Scott from thedailyexposition.com. In this video, I will be showing you now how to set up your Nest Hub. I, in the last, last video, I showed you how to the unboxing for this video, and all that you're really going to need are three important things. Uh, number one, you need a power outlet to the device that came in the box. You will need a mobile device. If you have an Android device, it's probably gonna make your life a little bit easier because the Google Home app tends to just run better on Android from my experience. And you obviously need a power source for this to be plugged into. Um, if you're just setting this up so that way you can have it set up and you're gonna be moving it to another location, that's totally fine. I'm gonna be setting it up right here next to me before I move it to the living room where it will have its final space. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started here. We're just gonna go ahead and plug it into the back, into the obvious power port slot. And then we're going to plug the device into an outlet. It doesn't really matter where. I'm just picking the outlet that is closest to me. Once you do that, obviously, the device will start to power on the display. It's gonna give you that nice classic Google logo. It's going to take a few moments to get start up. It, when it does, it will start giving you voice commands like your device is ready to set up. Please go to the Google Home app and go through all these steps, which you're gonna absolutely love. And I will be showing you how to do the Google Home setup too, so don't worry about it too much. Wait for this device to load up. Gives you a nice chime. That means it's booted up. Now it's going through to make sure that it needs to be set up. It's just running its normal system checks. Hi, to get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. All right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and go to the Google Home app. You can just type in home, it should appear right up on your device, and then you're going to get your classic home screen. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click the plus sign. From there, you're gonna click set up a device. It's gonna give you two options. Works with Google, which means you have something already set up. This is a third party device that's already been used. You probably had it if you didn't have a smart home before like Philips Hue. Uh, you're going to be setting up the setup new devices in your home. Once you tap the option, select the home that you want it to. It's going to go ahead and look for devices. And give it a few minutes and it should find the device. It should then say Nest Hub was found correctly and it's, we're going to go ahead and click yes. It's going to connect to the Nest Hub and then it's going to connect it to Wi-Fi. Make sure that it does have a Wi-Fi connection or that your signal is strong enough. Mine's relatively close, so it shouldn't take too long for the setup process to go. There we go, it now reads that it's connected. And it wants to double check that the code that's seen on your device is the same code that's on here. If it is, tap yes. Additional legal terms is just their privacy policy. You can go ahead and choose to join their improved Nest program to collect telemetry data. I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. You're gonna go ahead and set it to whichever room you want it to show up in. I'm gonna be sitting in mine in the living room, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose living room. Then I'm gonna select, yep. Now I'm gonna to connect to my home Wi-Fi network. Now it's gonna go ahead and click connecting to Wi-Fi, and it should be doing it for the device in front of us as well. You'll be getting a nice little setup screen that's gonna be warning that it's doing, it's running its system updates. And you can mention, if you want to use Google Assistant, um, it's going to go ahead and just give you the typical, if you want to use it for YouTube recommendations or whatnot, I go ahead and click next. I want it to use everything. I'm not an overly privacy conscious person because I kind of realize that it's a fool's errand a bit. And if you're putting a smart speaker in your home, you're going to be trading up some sense of privacy. If you have voice match already set up, you can enable it. You just have to click next and I agree. If you've never set this up before, it's gonna have you go ahead and do some checks, but your Google device should already be able to recognize it. Your assistant can already recognize your device. So while that's going on, it should be setting that up. And as you can see, the updates for this device are nearly done. This will probably need to power cycle at least once, maybe twice. Once it goes through the power cycling process, it should be good to go. Normally after the updates, you're pretty much at the end point. Now, one thing you can do is you can save audio. You can save audio to the cloud, which allows Google to analyze it and give you better recommendations as what to use it for, or you can choose not to. This is a opt-in feature. By default, they will not collect your audio. You have to explicitly declare it now. You have previously saved audio because Google removed it for all accounts. They should have sent you an email if you didn't see it. Uh, you can choose to give them the audio information. I'm gonna do it, mostly because I know a human isn't really reviewing it all that much. Uh, but there are trained reviewers who will review it if there is confusion on the system. You're going to give them all kinds of legal disclaimers, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to click agree. 
and you can click get personal results with your voice. This is useful so that way the device can detect who you are. Um, if you have a Nest Hub Max, for instance, when you walk up to it, it'll register who you are, show you what's on your specific calendar, and use that information. I'm a big fan of this feature. I'm going to click I agree. And then you get to choose the default music devices. It doesn't really matter. You use whichever one you have. Uh, keep in mind, Google Play Music, while it's still an option, is being discontinued. Then you just click Next. You can click Next. You can basically just hit Next all the way through. If you want to set up Google Duo, you can. Um, I've never used Google Duo. One thing to keep in mind too is that since this device does not have an integrated camera, you're not really getting much benefit out of it other than shooting your cell phone. Uh, I will go ahead and click not for now. And you can choose to use Google Photos. Um, I'll just use an art gallery. Choose some nice photos. Click continue. It's gonna go ahead and install the, any updates that are remaining. And then after that, the device will be fully set up. It's a fairly painless process. It's just a little tedious clicking through the yes, no, yes, no menus that you're inevitably going to do with any device that you're setting up. Uh, one thing I'll mention is the ambient EQ light sensor, which was that middle item that we discussed. This will adjust to the screen brightness in the room. This is useful that way when it's dark out or in, dark in your house, it won't shine a very bright display. I have this on my Nest Hub Max, I will enable it. The mic mute switch is on the back, as it mentions. Volume controls, it just shows you where it is. You click dumb, and then it says living room display is ready. Click continue. And that was how to set up the Google Nest Hub. If you do have any questions about this product, please feel free to ask in the comments below. I might be doing a comparison video in the future between this and the Nest Hub Max, just so you can get a better idea of the full differences between the two products but I'm glad that I added it. It's a nice addition to my living room and it just makes the room feel a little bit smarter than using the Nest Mini that I previously had. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and I will gladly see you in the next one.